it's, it's a funny experience being up here on a stage and I can see barely any faces, but I assume there are people out there, so hello to all of you. Hello to Ted. I've never been next to a Ted before and it's a really nice moment. And I'm really glad to see my friends also are on the stage with me, so I don't feel so lonely. Um, like uh, Carol, who spoke earlier, I also have to have some notes because I ramble, I forget where I am, I forget my name, so a few notes are helpful. Um, why reading matters. I'm sure everyone here knows the importance of literacy. It is a basic human right for all of us. But are we aware of the difference between literacy and reading for pleasure? Because they are very, very different things in my view. And they are what divides many people in the world and what stops people from being as successful as they can, but can be. Um, I don't know how many people here are brave enough to put up their hands and say they don't enjoy reading. Who doesn't enjoy reading? Everyone enjoys reading. Well, great. So you're a converted audience, and that means that you can go out and start to change the world. Um, I'm going to press this. Hopefully, this will work. So if we see here, I'm just going to show you a series of shots. They are all authors speaking to various different groups of children of various ages, Anthony Horowitz, Andy Stanton, Jacqueline Wilson. And all of them, in all of the photographs, you will see children enjoying themselves. And in fact, the um, whole presentation has gone mad, so just let it go on its way. It's going through the whole thing, but it doesn't really matter. Um, for me, it is not enough that children learn to read and write, but never ever pick up a book for pleasure until they genuinely want to read, not because a teacher or a parent says it is good for them, but because they have discovered the magic for themselves. How can all of us here today actually make that happen if we're a parent or if we're an educator or even if we are a friend? How can we bring about that change for other people who actually do not find reading enjoyable. Um, each one of us is an individual and finding the trigger that allows us to enjoy a book it, it will be different again for each of us. It could be that we pick up a book or we're read to um, and we find a theme that inspires us. It could be a hobby. It could even be a comic. And all of us um, who have had children, either as teachers or as parents, will know that there are many, many different ways to tackle this. And um, we must always look to find a way to open that magic door for each and every child that comes into our care. Um, I look back to my own childhood, and I was very lucky that my parents actually loved books. Um, it, I came from a very ordinary um, home in Britain, but both my parents were great readers. We went to the libraries frequently. There were books, second-hand books or borrowed books in, in our house. And my parents set great store um, by books, by reading and education. And so they were able to pass it on to us. Um, when I was a small child, we didn't have a television, and that was quite normal. It might sound really weird today, but actually... Um, when, I was, when I was a small child, televisions were rare and far and few between. And that might have been an advantage because it meant we had a lot more time for other pursuits, um, playing games, reading, just going out and getting up to mischief most of the time. Um, the, so sort of my early, early years were filled with loving books, being read to, going to the library, um, teachers encouraging us at school, but there was not too much pressure. But when I went to secondary school, I was actually turned off reading for several years because then when I went to secondary school, it was about serious learning. And for English, we had to study set texts. And in those days, they were actually um, chosen because they were dull, boring, and worthy. And 
it turned me right off. And the only books that I read during my sort of between the ages of 11 till about 14 um, were books that were set at school that I had to study for homework, to look at characters and do plot analysis. And it actually killed those books for me. And I don't think I, even now I could go back and read those same books. Um, but I did still continue to read comics, newspapers, women's magazines, and probably women's magazines of that kind don't exist any longer, but it used to have what was called the woman's problem page. And on the problem page, it would be, it would be um, anonymous people writing in for advice on all sorts of issues, most of which I had no understanding of what they were on about, but it seemed to involve, um, it was a woman's magazine, it seemed to involve problem with men. And I used to find these both the questions and the answers fascinating. It kept me reading for about three years um, because there was very little else that I found enjoyable. But then I enrolled to study A-level English literature and I was absolutely blessed with inspirational teachers at A-level. And I have to say, having sat here through the most wonderful talks by teachers from Winchester, you are blessed with inspirational teachers and let's give them a big round of applause. So suddenly, at A-level, um, the teachers I had decided that we were going to read all sorts of books. And these books had absolutely nothing that I could see to do with A-level literature, all the study, the texts that we were going to study, all the books. None of them were boring. None of them were worthy. They were all... Um, just incredible and it opened up a whole new world to me and changed the course of my life and that is what good teachers do they can often change the course of your life and open up doors that you never thought were possible so um, I have an eternal debt of gratitude to my teachers from back in my school days who were just doing a job they loved and they were doing it with passion so I have a debt back to society because those teachers gave me a gift, and it was a priceless gift. They opened up the world to me of books and enjoyment and enlightenment and passion that was fulfilled through reading and further reading and studying. Um, and I believe that all of us have a duty to try and help others find their way through to enjoying books. And it isn't just about being literate, it is way beyond that. When you enjoy books, it is an addiction. You will have been bitten by that bug and there is absolutely no antidote. So that is my message today, why reading matters. It matters because it has been proven statistically that all of us, and even from when we're little to up until when we are very old and ancient, like me on the stage, if we read regularly, we have a better chance in life every single day and in every single way because reading is one of the most unique defining features of human beings, the ability to read, to write and record all that we think about. I'm just going to flick through and see if there's anything else here that I've missed in this um, um, collage of photos. Hold on. I, I love this photo, and I think, sorry, go back one. This little girl um, just curled up. Um, this is the author of the book. <laughs> and the next one shows Tony Ross, who wrote and illustrated the book. And at the end, um, we see someone who has got a book, and he's just about to go away and enjoy having got a signature on his book. Thank you all for listening to me today.